If you're anything like me, one of the very first things that you wanted to do after starting down the Bitcoin rabbit hole was tell everyone that you knew about how important this thing was. The thing about orange pilling others is that it's not exactly easy. So I'm going to give you some tips. The first thing to keep in mind is that, well, this meme is pretty true. You've probably heard this. Everyone buys Bitcoin at the price they deserve. And honestly, that's exactly accurate. I was talking to somebody recently about Bitcoin toxicity, and they were saying that they think it distracts from people adopting Bitcoin. Their argument was that because of how toxic some people can be, and I put toxic in air quotes here, that others looking in might go, whoa, that's pretty crazy. I don't want anything to do with that. And I said, I don't agree. I'd like to direct your attention to the screen for a short video, if you don't mind. And if you're against Bitcoin toxicity, you're against Bitcoin. And if you're against Bitcoin, you're against freedom. With that, I yield back. Nico sums up exactly what I said before I'd even seen what Nico had to say on the point. What I said was, if you are into shitcoins, if you're into anything that is against Bitcoin, you're either one, ignorant, or two, you're acting out of maliciousness. You might not have done the research, so you simply don't know. Okay, fair enough. Or you might simply be somebody that is actively shilling garbage. Okay, fair enough. But either of those points deserve condemnation and ridicule. What does this have to do with orange pilling somebody? Well, the people that are outside the world of Bitcoin probably don't even know that these conversations are happening at all. It's very possible that there are people that have pushed the envelope a bit too far, but I haven't seen them. The people I've seen labeled as Bitcoin maximalists or Bitcoin toxic types are those that believe so adamantly in how brilliant Bitcoin is that they will do everything that they can to shun anything other than Bitcoin when it comes to the monetary system. So how do you go about drawing people into this world that can be a bit chaotic, a bit toxic, if you want to use that label, and get them even interested? I'm going to be completely honest. The people that I've orange-pilled are all family members, and that's kind of where I want to start with this. The people that you're going to have the most success orange-pilling are those that you're closest to, those that you have built relationships with, those that believe your recommendations and think that you're not a crazy person. But that assumes you're not a crazy person. So this brings me to my next point. The number one thing that you can do to successfully orange pill someone is know that you have the answers to whatever questions they might ask. And because the people that are around you are going to have questions that are different than the people that are around me, you're going to have to curtail your knowledge, your curriculum to those people that you know. Point being, I live in the Pacific Northwest, and being that this is a very literally green area, people care about the environment more than they might in other parts of the world. Thus, a lot of the questions that I get when I'm wearing this hat or this hoodie out and about have to do with energy. Thankfully, I've done a lot of research onto the energy side of things, and while I'm not an expert, I certainly have the answer to most of their questions. If somebody thinks that a Bitcoin miner produces carbon emissions, I can point to their Tesla or their Nissan Leaf and say, a Bitcoin miner, just like your computer, your phone, whatever electronic device I want to point to, produces the exact same amount of carbon emissions, which is none. That isn't the point. It's how the energy is generated and why energy is so important for all of humanity. A lot of people like to start with money and what money is. And while that is an extremely important topic, I like to go somewhere else. When it comes to delivering Bitcoin related information, timechaincalendar.com is one of my favorite places to go to. I can point to and explain so many different aspects of Bitcoin from this one place. I can talk about the epoch that we are currently in and how Bitcoin miners earn Bitcoin. I can talk about how much of the supply is left. I can talk about the exchange rate, and that's the term and phrasing that I like to use. I don't like to say that people are buying Bitcoin. I like to explain that you're exchanging fiat for a different, better money. I can explain the blocks and how every 10 minutes on average, that number goes up by one. I can explain the hash rate, and while it typically trends upward, it does fluctuate and why that is an important thing overall. I can explain the difficulty adjustment and also the having here. You can point people to to places like Trader University, where Matthew Crowder has something like 20 odd videos explaining all sorts of aspects of Bitcoin. I can point people to Matthew Crowder's YouTube, where he has even more information. Once people start to ask even deeper questions, you can start explaining why taking self-custody is so important and why in the past, 
That hasn't been entirely possible. You can explain to somebody how if they do self-custody the right way, they can store generational wealth in their mind. When somebody's ready for a real deep dive, you can point them to a place like Robert Breedlove's chat with Michael Saylor, where for over 20 odd hours, they talk about money from the ground up and why Bitcoin is unlike anything that we have ever seen. Which one's the best crypto asset? Well, Bitcoin's the best crypto asset. Okay, What's the second best? There is no second best. Beyond the Sailor series, you've got Robert's chat with Jason Lowry, who looks at Bitcoin from a whole different perspective. I found this video recently, and it has quickly become one of my favorites when it comes to explaining why Bitcoin is so important and so special. In just under an hour and a half, Luke Broyles explains the nitty gritty of Bitcoin, and it is very easy to follow, even if you have zero understanding of what Bitcoin is. One of the most fun parts of explaining Bitcoin to somebody once you have the requisite knowledge to do so is you get to see those aha light bulb moments click on in their head as they ask questions and you go, that's a good question. That is exactly the kind of question you should be asking. Questions like, why will there only ever be 21 million? And what happens if more people need Bitcoin and they can't get any? Questions like, I've heard those Satoshis can be divided up even further than they already are. How isn't that the same as inflation? Questions like, what is the halving? Why does that matter? And when is the next one? You've probably heard this phrase many, many times if you've been in the Bitcoin space for any amount of time. The phrase is, we are so, so early. Wicked over on Twitter posts some really great videos that explain very detailed information in extremely easy to understand visual ways. It's been said that you don't actually know a thing all that well until you can successfully teach somebody else about that thing. The number one most important thing to get right when it comes to orange pilling somebody is having the answers to the questions that they're going to ask. And because I don't know who you know and what it is that they're interested in and the things that they're going to ask, I can't tell you exactly what things you should be researching. Like so many things in life, the number one thing to get right is what you know. They tell you when you're on a plane that the first place that you should put the oxygen mask is on your own mouth, not on your child's, not on your friend's, but make sure that you are in a place where you can help your child, your friend, your family members. The same is true with Bitcoin. Participate in the world that you want to see more of. If you think that we should only have more quality goods that last a long time, then only buy quality goods that last a long time. If you think that we should have access to more energy, then make sure that you're saying these things and talking to people about energy. If you think our options when it comes to food should be natural, healthy, things that don't have a bunch of processed garbage in it, then make sure that that's the kind of stuff that you're eating. Your coworkers, your family members, those that you're around will see you taking action in these areas that you claim and are proving through your actions are important. And over the course of time, somebody somewhere will ask you a question. Why do you buy quality leather goods when you could buy junk from Walmart? How come you're eating quality food as opposed to the cheap bugs? If you live the life that you want to see more of, then it is bound to happen somewhere along the line is going to ask you a question about that life that you are leading. They're going to want to know why it is that you lead the life that you do and why you seem so happy. The Bitcoin rabbit hole has many, many tunnels and they go very deep in all sorts of directions. The best thing that you can do to help orange pill somebody is to make sure that you understand Bitcoin as deeply as you possibly can. I've spent more than a thousand hours and it might be even reaching 2000 at this point researching Bitcoin and I still feel like I've only scratched the surface of what this is. Because what this is, is the lifeblood of an entire civilization. The lifeblood that we've had for centuries is poisoned, rotten to its core. Fiat money that is controlled by a select few that get to do whatever they want without any of our say. Bitcoin upends that entire system. It'd be like trying to explain to somebody back in 1400 how important the internet will be one day before the printing press was even invented. The idea behind Bitcoin and the ideas that it ushers in are so catastrophically, life-alteringly different than anything that we have ever known 
that it is almost impossible to fully grasp any one aspect of it. But my advice to you is learn as much as you can in those areas that interest you the most, because sooner or later, they are going to come to you with questions. 